look at all the videos of people saying, um, I returned my iPhone 10 and went back to the iPhone, blah, blah, blah. All right, guys, welcome back to another video. It's your man, Jay Will. So did the iPhone 10 fail? Did it really drop, did Apple drop the ball with the iPhone 10? So in this video, I want to do a brief discussion with iPhone X owners and people who have briefly used the iPhone 10 uh, and, and get your feedback on that because there were some rumors at one point of the iPhone 10 being discontinued. In reality, they just cut numbers down on ordering supplies to make more phones. So I guess you could interpret that as just being discontinued. Uh, but at the same time, it just could mean the sales, uh, they have so many phones already produced that sales are just not what they thought it was going to be, what they thought it was going to be. And I'm going to lean more towards that. I'm not going to go out on a direct answer and say, yes, the iPhone um, X or the iPhone 10 failed because that wouldn't be entirely true. But what I will say is that a lot of people who bought the iPhone 10 that I know of, and you can do the search for yourself. Just look on YouTube. Look on YouTube and uh, look at all the videos of people saying, um, I returned my iPhone 10 and went back to the iPhone, blah, 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 whatever it is. Uh, and it's not just tech reviewers this time. There's plenty of people out there uh, who are maybe have a YouTube channel, but they're not, uh, they're not tech reviewers. So they bought the iPhone 10 because iPhones are primarily the phones that they use. And so they wanted to go to the next step, which they thought it was going to be great. But a lot of the complaints that I hear from people who are not tech reviewers that don't like the iPhone 10 is, oh, the screen's too small. The phone's too small. I'm going back to my bigger iPhone 7 Plus. I'm going back to my bigger iPhone 8 Plus, whatever they're going back to. Uh, but in the tech community, uh, it appears that a ton of people, uh, and there's those videos are out there too, mine included. Uh, I, I've got some on my channel. You can search for those. Uh, the the phone, you know, it just, I bought, I had two of them. The first one paid full cost for it. The second one uh, paid full cost for it. I had three. Uh, and the, the third one got a huge discount on it and ended up flipping that and making some money. So uh, for those that kept asking about that, I thought you got rid of it. I thought you got rid of it. Follow me on social media, Mr. J.O. Williams. Hit the links in the description of these videos. You can catch all my social media to keep up what's happening outside of YouTube because I, I post on Twitter several times a day and Instagram and Google Plus. Uh, so with that being said, the iPhone 10 isn't so much a failure to me. It's more along the lines of it's just not what consumers want right now. A lot of consumers don't want to give up their home button. Giving up a fingerprint reader on a phone that you've been using for years uh, could be tough for some people. And so some people say, oh, you're just not used to it. This is the direction that Apple has to go. No, they don't. If something flops big enough, you're going to revert back to what's working for you. Uh, and even if they don't change the design, I think Apple's probably going to add a fingerprint reader somewhere down the line if they hear that enough. Because having a fingerprint reader on a phone is way easier to access uh, than unlocking. Those people out there, when I said that before in another video, everybody said, oh, no, Jay, uh, you're wrong. It's not hard to unlock your phone with your face. Well, it's not an iris scanner. With the Samsung phone, I can just, my note, I can just hold it up, boom, it unlocks from just me looking at it, nothing required. Uh, with the iPhone though, you can hold it up, but you have to swipe it to get it open. And some people are probably getting tired of that. Uh, I did, I got tired of it really fast. I don't think that the push forward on the iPhone 10 was as big as, you know, we think about this now. What's different from your iPhone 8 or 8 Plus than your iPhone 10? Go, go ahead and step backwards to the iPhone 7 Plus. What's so different that you're winning with the iPhone 10? Okay, you got an AMOLED display. Okay, you got an emojis. You got facial recognition. You got portrait mode on the front cameras. You got optical image stabilization on the cam both cameras on the rear. Do you really see the difference uh, in some of these things? Probably not. Uh, also, uh, well, back to what I was saying before, I think the main complaint that I hear people saying is that the phone's too small. And I know Apple reads these blogs. I know they have people out there, little watchdogs, finding out what's going on. And I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that those rumors of them making two bigger iPhones are probably true. At least one. They can capitalize on this by keeping the same form factor. And by the way, this is the front camera of the iPhone 8 Plus. If you don't wonder why I'm not holding it. Um, 
this is the front camera of the iPhone 8 Plus. So if they keep this same size phone and fill it with screen, even if they bring that silly notch back, I would have just ignored it. But give us a fingerprint reader on the back or something, Apple. Give it to us. Give it to us. So do you guys who own the iPhone 10 currently still, or are you like me who sold it uh, after having it for like two months, um, or you had it for a week, how long did it take for you to sell your iPhone 10? And how long have you had your iPhone 10? Do you plan on getting ready of your iPhone 10? Are you tired of your iPhone 10? Is the iPhone 10 a failure? It's your man Jay Will. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.